It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, uh, I, of course, I didn't change my acknowledgement one on this. I hope I've used the right one. I, I actually changed one that had your name on it, but I don't know uh, what is, but I may have modified uh, the, the, the wrong thing. We'll hope not. Most will be the same. My collaborators from the Medical Center, Department of Infectious Disease, uh, the guy doing the work in our lab, Julio from University of Guanajuato, who was doing a postdoc, but we're changing his appointment to research assistant professor, which is a uh, renewable position and means he can apply for grants. This should be thanks to Joaquim Norbrega and the university, Federal University of San Carlos to, uh, for the invitation. There's a problem in preparing slides. All these slides I've had this week, I, I don't know oftentimes which one I'm modifying to add things to. I think this is the right one. Metalomics, an approach that involves comprehensive analysis of metal metalloid species in a cell or tissue type. Actually, this is the Journal of Pure and Applied Chemistry, IUPAX official journal, and so it became officialized in this article with various definitions. Other people have spoken of it in a variety of ways in different articles. So you can read all about that, but I think identification of metals is a little weak. Do a lot more than that. So you gotta do more than identify metal. Metal are interactions with cell components. Now, that starts to get a little more difficult. Metal transformations, that can take place and complicate your life. And metal functions uh, of various species. That is, you might say, what does the protein do with and without a, its metal cohort? So it all gets relatively complicated. And our approach is really what I've been talking about with the class, and that is speciation analysis. But we're going to typically try to look at a few larger molecules rather than just the small molecules. And we even include, at least I do, and this article does not exclude, looking at phosphorus and sulfur as part of the metalomics approach. We use a variety of chromatographies. We may use two or three types with HPLC into ICPMS. And that applies over here too. We may pre-separate uh, and use, in our case, we use nanoflow HPLC uh, <coughs> or nano uh, spray as well for that. But turns out that whether you like it or not, life is complex. And so sometimes we do other experiments and the People on the clinical side of the street like to image, use imaging with laser confocal microscopy to try to locate the metal in the cell. The idea is that the metal will complex with a dye, generate a color, that color will fluoresce, and you can follow the metal around the individual cells to see where it's located. Very important technique for them. The issue, I think, for us is which is the right dye and what is its behavior. And I hope to be able to talk about that at the end of the talk. Gene expression experiments, net, whoops, get back. Necessary uh, to produce and generate the appropriate RNA to build proteins. And we build proteins based on mRNA. First is the transcription where the DNA is sliced and a piece of one of the two slices is taken and it has the genetic code in it for whatever we happen to look for. And then on that basis, we build the protein. And you'll see uh, uh, a little later in these genetic experience, experiments, 
if we want to stop the protein from being built, we send in a piece of RNA that doesn't match anything, and then it blocks the building of the protein we'd like to examine. Is it necessary? Is it not necessary? Well, if we block it, we'll find out. Okay, let's move on. We use the Agilent uh, instrumentation. This is the 7700 still on the market. We are now, I'll show you at the end of the talk, or toward the end of the talk, more of the 8800. And kind of our first use in that, that instrument that without it we couldn't have done the, the last few slides. Just a few uh, terms you're going to see. HC is the disease, a fungus, we might call it a pathogen, an infection, a disease, etc. And macrophage means an activated white blood cell. And I'll talk about a little more about that. Well, right now, bone marrow macrophage activated uh, and bone marrow macrophage uh, either of these terms, size exclusion, chromatography, SEC, ICPMS, nano LC chip, electrospray MS, real-time PCR, our friends in the medical center do that, to see if the protein is expressed. That is, is the transcription right to make a protein? Because it's expressed does not mean it actually is built. It means everything is right for building it, but we have to go to the next step, translation, to build the protein. Uh, silencing RNA is the RNA that blocks the formation of a certain protein. GMCSF is critical to activate the white blood cell. Normally, they're kind of lazy, uh, and so they don't work. You think, well, I need these white blood cells to inhibit uh, infections and, and they do work but they have to be activated and this thing's a small uh, peptide uh, uh, or protein to activate the white blood cell. This is another one of those but it was a nice test thing in our study that it does not activate the white blood cell so you're not going to see any more of that. Uh, metallothionine, our most important protein because it contains about 20 sulfurs, up to seven of those sites will bind zinc, and zinc is going to be our favored metal of the day. Zip and Zint are zinc transporter proteins, and what they do is important in this definition, Zip transports into the cell fluid the cytoplasm. Zint transports out of the cell fluid. It's not something that transports into or out of the cell, but into the cell fluid. KO means a knockout mice. And you buy these things for a lot of money. And we've used mice to knock out the metallothionine two isoforms of metallothionine. And we've used them to knock out these transporter proteins. Hopefully this all comes together. Uh, for you, and I'm going to try to go uh, a little bit slow so I don't confuse myself mostly. Uh, think of parts of the world that are very hot and humid in the summer, and this can lead to the disease called histoplasmosis. This is the infection, the fungus, and at room temperature it's a mold, but at body temperature it becomes a yeast, so that is the disease. It has a worldwide uh, distribution, but I only have information for the United States, and that's about a half a million people a year. And these tend to be people who are immunocompromised, uh, so meaning the lungs don't work as well as they could because there might be a condition like asthma. So what we'd like to find out is, is there ultimately any relief? But first, we're going to have to try to figure out what's happening. And there's been quite a bit of work before we started on this with metals involving this disease. So let's, let's move on, hopefully a little more quickly. Questions and comments. Uh, metals at the cells are tightly controlled. 
which ones. Iron has been in most study, but zinc seems to be more important. Since both this uh, disease and the macrophage require metals, do they compete for metals? Well, certainly they do. And can we figure out how they compete? What happens to the metals when this infection resides inside the macrophage? Remember, the white blood cell is supposed to bring in the disease and kill it. Not so easy. First, it has to be activated, but this little cartoon gives you somewhat of the idea, is that you take it into this big white blood cell and then you chew it up, uh, which it does. It does take the process of lysing, but it doesn't get it all. So the question is, is there any way to make this process a little more effective? And that actually is a picture of an activated white blood cells. It's the little tentacles that takes in something. This is not a thing from the Amazon jungle, but it is a creature that uh, resides within us, and in particular, this guy. So this talk is mainly involving mice. And the mice are kept, grown, cultured, nurtured, fed zinc, uh, diseased, etc., over in the medical center in the deep labs, with Kavitha being the student that is working on that. So, the infection, HC, and the immune response. Let's proceed a little bit here. We have immune cells, but they're not necessarily active. We can activate them with this so-called cytokine, and uh, actually the cells will even secrete that to become activated, and then they'll become macrophage cells, activated white blood cells, where they're trying to take in these various diseases and ultimately kill them, normally through a cell lysing mechanism, but it appears Zinc as a metal is critical to do this. Okay, so on we go. What we knew initially when we first started the experiments is if we just grew this disease, we meaning Kavitha, uh, if we grew the disease and we added T-Pen, that's a chelating agent, we'll chelate zinc, you basically killed the disease. Removing the zinc, it had to have zinc to live. As far as iron, if we added iron sulfate plus T-Pen, it restored the growth a bit, but look what zinc does. Zinc restores the growth almost completely for this disease. So problem solved, eliminate the zinc. How do you do that? since zinc is an element that's required for us to live, or that mouse to live, how do we eliminate the zinc to the disease, but keep it going as far as the macrophage or that activated white blood cell? And that really is the crux of the problem. So to try to find answers, what do we do? We go ahead and start experimenting to see what's going to happen. And I think the best, since I'm not a, a great biologist by any means, or even a poor biologist, I think the best way for me to try to explain it is to kind of build a model, a model based on the biology experiments and a model based on the experiments we do in my lab. We are the chromatography, ICPMS, other kinds of mass spectrometry, fluorescence detection partner. And so our campuses are close, the medical center, and where we reside, so we often go back and forth with the samples. And I'll try to point out, we could not do this if we did not have the partner. On the other hand, they could not do this if they had, didn't have us. Uh, and it's a nice example of elemental speciation taken to a, a point where it may actually have some uh, promise. We are fortunate in having a small grant from the NIH to start this work, and now, uh, just in the last few weeks, a larger grant to continue it. So somebody believes maybe we can get something out of this, and I hope that too. 
The experimental design, let's just take a look at it. The mouse, uh, Kavitha takes the macrophage from the mouse, adds are the white blood cells, takes the GMCSF, activates that macrophage, activates and then infects it with this stuff. It's, here's our infected white blood cell now. Uses SDS to break the membranes so we can isolate the infection and isolate the macrophage lysate. And we can look either of these with ICPMS for total analysis. <laughs>